Welcome back to the matinee, guys. Yeah. What do you know about Slender Man? Tell us what you know well, about Slender Man. Oh my God, Not no. that it matters because today we're talking about the Slender, Slender Man, Man stabbings. stabbings. <laughs> so you're going to learn well, about Slender Man. Oh. It was a singular, a singular stab. event. Not a singular stab, no. So are you going to give the people backstory on what Slender Man is? I we'll kind of get into it a little bit later because i'm i want to get into kind of some of the background of like the main three characters i guess four if you count slender man but i wouldn't necessarily call them characters well the 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 main the main main three people involved there we go (laughs) but the characters of this characters kind of make sense yeah yeah so the hand motions are fantastic today (laughs) (laughs) fucking pardon me for these um pronunciations of last names because i love the game we haven't played the game (sighs) well okay so our first person that we have and this one was kind of the main person behind the crime okay Uh, and her name is morgan geyser okay and she was born on may 16th 2002 Oh, even more of a fetus than you. Yeah, only two years younger than me. And which guess makes what? this horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you haven't committed a murder. Because at this, like around the same time that this happened, I was also into like the creepypasta, but I didn't have the thing that was like, go commit a fucking crime. Yeah, to, let's like, do a felony. <laughs> right. So um, she was born and uh, raised in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Whoop, whoop, Wisconsin crew. Yeah, and the... For, for what you guys don't know, this is like the bottom of fucking Wisconsin. So it's really close to... Down by like Milwaukee, El- Madison, kind of like a south, south. A little bit farther. She kind of had a pretty normal childhood. Her father did suffer from schizophrenia, but he had it pretty medicated and was really under control. Didn't really hear anything about her mom, just that she had a pretty normal midwestern childhood the main thing that sticks out to me on this one was that it was one of the many situations that we've had in cases that we've had where i've said it was literally just an impulse control problem like they couldn't stop that little voice in their head saying hey i wonder what it would be like yeah yeah uh, it kind of makes sense uh later on especially for that timeline i mean Mm mm-hmm After the stabbing and everything that happened, they started talking to some classmates to kind of get some understanding of, like, why the fuck this happened. So a former sixth grade classmate of Morgan, because this happened when they were literally only in fucking sixth grade. Height of puberty. Like, that's peak, st- peak beginning puberty. Yeah. Like, your life's already starting to go a little I mean, weird. I kind of started puberty a little early. I was, like, in between I started fourth late. and fifth grade. I started late. Yeah. I was in seventh grade oh, fuck i wish <laughs> um it was kind of shitty honestly yeah. honestly hitting puberty late is shitty just because everybody else is getting attention and you're just that weirdo the weird scrawny kid sitting in the corner yeah, yeah i was already the weird kid i was just even weirder mm. <sighs> so the sixth grade classmate of morgan stated that she was you know pretty smart capable and relaxed until they reached about fourth grade which Honestly, the fact that this sixth grader is describing another person like that is, you know, shows that... That's pretty mature for yeah. whatever sixth grader that they talk to. The classmate then described how Margaret, uh, Morgan started to not really act her normal way um, and that she became, like, heavily obsessed with suicide. Um, uh, that <laughs> should have been a type of warning sign. Right. Usually if somebody is heavily obsessed with suicide, they're either dealing with some sort of mental depression mm-hmm. type of issue or well i don't think it was more so obsessed with her doing it to herself i think it was just the concept, the concept okay of people doing that to themselves um i couldn't really find anything that elaborated on that other than the fact that like she would constantly look up like people mur- uh committing suicide people um like different ways to do it so i don't think it was really more so her wanting to do that to herself more so i just the idea maybe this is more of an insight into me than it is into (laughs) morgan Mm -hmm. in this situation maybe you experienced it too maybe other people experienced it if you experienced this let us know down below but as a kid i found myself in a situation where i wanted to know what things felt like 
Like, I always wondered. I never broke a bone as a kid. I always wanted to know <gasps> what it felt like to break my leg or break my arm. Is it kind of the thing where it's like, oh, God, oh man, I wish, like, this is fucked up. Really fucked up thinking, like, oh, man, I wish I could just be in the hospital for a week and just see how people would react or something like it's, that. Yeah, it's so attention-seeking yeah. behavior is I what think, it is. <laughs> that just at, the time, at the time, I didn't realize it was attention-seeking behavior. Mm-hmm. But, oh, I mean, yeah. being raised as a middle child. <laughs> middle child kid. Yeah. Which is a weird, I'm a weird middle child because i'm the youngest on my mom's side but i'm the middle child of my dad's so she had this like suicidal ideation this attention seeking Mm -hmm. behavior kind of thing going on right and i I wish i wish that was elaborated on because i really do want to know if it was her having suicidal tendencies or i don't think it would have been so much a suicidal tendency as a I think you're just obsessed. Just, with the act. just. I, I wonder what that would be like. I wonder what that would feel like. I wonder what people would think if that was me. Probably, or that maybe she wanted to like witness it or something. Because it was also at this time that she kind of believed that Slenderman was coming after her. Because this is around the time when creepy pastas really became a big thing, and like you know the creepy pasta wiki came out. Mm-hmm. And all this thing, and then obviously... Creepy and then pa- Slender Man ended up becoming a very, very popular oh, video yeah, with, game. with the game coming out, and then, like, he was just a very easy thing for people to draw for, like, fan art and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's a circle and a bow tie. the movie came out, and that's what caused this to happen? And no, the movie didn't come out until four years later in 2018. Honestly, I'm surprised <laughs> the movie even ended up coming out after Me this. Me too, also, it was horrible. <laughs> it was a really bad movie. But that's the thing with creepypastas is everyone gets mm-hmm. their own opinions. Yeah, it, it's the best way to describe creepypasta is just like um, it's horror stories. Horror with- stories that all has a big fan base. Like mm-hmm. um, yeah, Jeff the Killer is like a rip off of uh, Jack uh, Jack the Ripper, mm-hmm. and then like you have like um, a Smile Dog became a big one for a lot of people. It was that weird image of like the husky with the, like the really weird fucking big ass smile on its face. Yeah. And Basically, so it's, like, anything these that- images caused people to give background stories towards them. Yes, and ultimately the the main thing of creepy pasta is just to make you feel uncomfortable. Oh yeah. So it, if you feel to- uncomfortable, it's working. They're really common on the uh, no sleep reddits. Yes. Uh, and everything like that. It's it's just supposed to be scary stories. And for our older listeners, it's yeah, it's just scary stories. Yeah. It's like campfire stories, like ooh, and mm. then they came out of the shadows. Ah! <laughs> So yeah, she believed that this Slenderman character was going to get her. Uh, the classmate then said that this was also kind of when she started to distance herself from being her friend. Okay. Um, because then Morgan also started to carry around a sledgehammer. <laughs> Twelve years <laughs> old, walking around with a sledgehammer. Yeah, it, obviously this wasn't during like school, but it was like at the local park and all this kind of stuff. Like she would just have a sledgehammer, and she said that it was her weapon, and that she could so do whatever heavy. she wanted to do with it. <laughs> Why something so heavy though? Like. Right, like if it was a hammer, I'm, I'm not okay. advocating for it, but like a hammer or well, a steak knife or something lighter like, weight sledgehammers. But she definitely just went into her dad's garage and was like, "This will do." Yeah, <laughs> why not go for an axe at that point? No, this is where we're playing the fucking game. I'm Ooh, pretty sure game. this is Anissa, but her last name Wire. Yeah, Anissa Wire. Anissa Wire. All right, yeah, that's what we're going with. So Anissa. <sighs> Again, there's not a whole lot of public information on their early childhood other than the fact that uh, she was born November 10th, 2001. Um, She was also born in the same city. And then at some point before fourth grade, around that area is when she became friends with Morgan and then her next uh, person, uh, Peyton Lautner. So it's the three of them are the conspirators in this? Uh, Or two of them are a conspirator and and one's a conspirator, And then Peyton was the victim. Okay. So, again, not a whole lot on Peyton, um, other than the fact that, again, born and raised in the same town. Uh, they were in the same grade. She sometime, uh, well, she was born January 1st, 2002. So then that kind of, they were all within a year of each other, right. really close in age. Same grade and everything, mm-hmm. yeah. Really only, a, like, a few months separating the, the three. Um, so, I'm assuming this might have been for Morgan's birthday, because this takes place in May. So, Teddy, you're a fucker, and that is staying in the episode. <laughs> this little shit calls her phone, <laughs> says, I'm outside, come outside. So we go outside, he's not out there, and she calls him, and he's like, oh, I'm at home. You know, he wanted to go out to the bar tonight, because I got paid. 
fuck you all go out. Not going to the bar. Ari and I are gonna Ari and I are gonna go out. Ari 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 Peyton had, you know, spent the night at a birthday sleepover. Uh, I'm assuming for Morgan's birthday again. Uh, and Anissa was there. Um, so the morning of the 31st, they were like, okay, well, we're kind of bored. Let's go to the park. Because they had a local, a local, like, wooded park. Like, late at night? No, early morning. Early morning, okay. Yeah. So they went there, and uh, I don't know whose idea it was. Probably Morgan's, because she was kind of the ringleader here. I was like, oh, let's play a game of hide and seek. Okay. So they're playing a game of hide and seek. And then obviously Morgan and Anissa, they they did not go off and hide. When I think one of them was the counter and they told, um, or they had Peyton count and they went and off. And they said they were going to hide. Yeah. And they like went off and like they waited for her to pass. And as soon as she passed, they jumped on her and pinned her to the ground. There's kind of confi- conflicting reports if it was just morgan doing the stabbing the stabbing and then so just holding her down because there's also some reports that she was just standing off to the side and morgan was the only one on top of her um peyton has a really hard time kind of did peyton survive this yes wow okay that part i didn't know yeah so she survived um she has a hard time remembering remembering what was going on exactly what understandably happened. so but i mean from, you're young you right. think you're hanging out with your friends mm-hmm. and the next thing you know you're they being all stabbed 11, 12, so like yeah and you don't know you're being stabbed you're just mm-hmm. like ow that hurts what's right. going on so general consensus is that morgan was the main one doing it um i do believe that anissa was just probably like started off holding her down and probably stopped and backed away a little bit i would imagine completely yeah mm-hmm. at so, first it seemed like fun and then she was like wait no this is actually like hurting her Right. So using a five inch long blade, Morgan stabbed her 19 times in her arms, legs and torso. So it was a big kitchen kitchen knife. knife, Yeah, yeah. it was was like the bigger um, kitchen knives. Two wounds were to major organs. I could not find which major major organs were hit, but I'm believing it might have been. I think she might have had a collapsed lung or like something like that, too. So one missed a major artery of her heart by less than a millimeter. Wow. And then another went through her diaphragm, cutting into her liver and stomach. Oof. So she had like three major. Huge huge risk of sepsis. Oh yeah. Huge fucking stab wounds. So you weren't able to find what organs were really hurt? See, it was written weird. So I don't know if they're referring to as the two major uh, stab wounds being the liver and into the stomach and then the one into the heart i'm not entirely sure i just know that like it the torso ones were like all well, towards major or- organs it de- i guess depends on where it was near her heart if it hit high up enough it, you said she had a collapsed lung but was it a punctured lung or was it just collapsed because it went through her diaphragm I, the, the, the whole lung injury kind of like some sources said that it was like that some sources didn't it, okay so it was one of those ones i think that happened okay but I was just trying to give you shit for it. saying I don't know what organs, and then immediately saying what organs. Right, but it, I'm again with how this was like rare. I found my sources it, it, everywhere was written that it was like oh, like two major arteries was or our organs were almost hit, and then like you know the liver got hit and whatnot. Because if you get stabbed in the liver, like that shit bleeds uh-huh. a lot. Uh huh. And then Morgan and Anissa were just like, oh my god, you need to just lay still. We're gonna go get help. Like. We they, don't know why we did this. We're going to go get help. Wow. Yeah, they, in fact, did not fucking go get help. They were just trying to get her to stay still so she would bleed out. Um, So they just walk off. Um, Peyton, Casually, calmly. Don't scream. And they, help, were pre- help. they were pretty far in into the woods, and Peyton was able to drag herself to the main road. Wow. What a strong girl. Like, her legs were, like, it was, she's, like, heavily fucking bleeding, too. Um, and she was found by a cyclist. And I I could find the 911 call for it, but it it's, it's not really, like, 
it's just him saying like hey i'm here with a 12 year old girl she's been stabbed and it's mm-hmm. like you know the night one operator going like oh like do you see the person that did it he goes no he's like do you know like where all of her stab wounds are and he's like i can't tell there's just like blood all over her clothes i don't know i don't want to roll her over she's in pain they're like, well, is she conscious? And she was having a full conversation with this man. Like, she was laying wow. in the grass, completely aware. Probably in agonizing pain, but surprisingly yeah. calm. So what she, a strong girl. Mm-hmm. Obviously, she was taken to the hospital. And I'll, I'll kind of get back to what happened to her thereafter. Five hours later, they found the two girls. Because she was able to be like, these were the fucking people, these were the that, people did it. that did it. Yeah. <laughs> the two girls were found um, and arrested near Interstate 94 about 4.9 miles away from where they were uh, where they stabbed Peyton. So they were probably still just like casually walking. I'll explain why they were just casually walking down Interstate 94. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like when they were searched, uh, the knife that they used to stab her was just in like one of the bags that they carried. Their goal was to meet Slenderman at his mansion called Slender Mansion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that's all part of the creepy pasta. Yeah. The only stuff I they know d- on Slenderman is from the games. I, I loved the games. The they game were terrifying was and so I fucking good. loved it. I don't know if this is a real place because I did all of this research last night. Um, yeah, so this bitch take- does five <laughs> pages worth of notes. You know you're a true crime <laughs> addict when you are you love a story so much that you do five pages of notes in well, a few I've hours of about, research. Yeah, I've known this about this one also with my hand fucking killing me <laughs> and you were still determined to write it down dude i don't know if you can tell how bad my handwriting gets it's at some awful point. i could bear <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wasn't gonna say anything but since you brought it up <laughs> i'm having a really bad carpal tunnel flare up and it's causing my pinky to not be able to really bend but, and like if i spread my fingers out like to flex my hand it just hurts <laughs> so like being able to hold a pencil apple pencil kind of sucked <laughs> But anyway, yeah, they wanted to go to Nicolet National Forest, and that's roughly 200 Nicolet. miles. Is it Nicolet? It is Nicolet. Oh, so it is a real place then. Yes. I didn't look it up, <laughs> so I don't know where it is. It's okay, I got you. Ni- um, yes, Nicolet Forest is a real place. Okay. Is it still in the state of Wisconsin, or is it... What are they going to do, move it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was that was mean. unnecessarily bitchy. I no, apologize. No, I'm thinking like, is it like, like, are they just yes. traveling in the state is, of Wisconsin? Yes, they are still okay. in the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> I didn't word it right. <laughs> you gotta keep that shit. That's funny as fuck. Penny will get, Penny will have a laugh. But anyway, it was still like two hundred. Give me some context, real quick. It's still two hundred miles away from like where they, where they currently were. So um, I'm kind of surprised you don't know this because it's not actually that far. It's, it's really the Shaquamanon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Shaquam uh, Sh- Nicolay National Forest. Is that by Wassa? <laughs> Is Wassa in that? Uh, it's, yeah. Um, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, then we're going to our backyard. <laughs> it's like twenty minutes on a Mercer. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a fucking real yeah. place? It's literally like forty minutes away from us. <laughs> you gotta keep this shit in. This is too funny. <laughs> Uh, Drew would be losing his fucking mind <laughs> with us right now. <laughs> Anyways, some background on what Slenderman like looks like. It's just like this really tall, skinny dude that has no facial features. He's just like you know those mor- real, you real know those white. morph suits where like you put the hood up and it's like your whole body is white. It's like one of those, but with you a know, tuxedo on top. Yeah, and then you just got weird tentacles coming out of your back. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about the tentacles. Right, I'm like. <sighs> Honestly, just look up a gameplay. Just look up Slenderman. You'll see what he looks like. Then if you watch the Slenderman movie that came out, then you'll kind of know what he looks like. Don't watch the movie. It's really bad. <laughs> if you want a real giggle, uh, Markiplier on YouTube. Yeah, Hilarious yeah. Hilarious playthrough. Honestly. He does not need our shout out, but my no. God, man. like lo- Did Your you see videos got visited? me through some dark times for a hot minute. Mm. So Morgan showed absolutely no empathy about what she did. But Anissa was like, 
right away like i feel fucking horrible i wish we didn't do that like she immediately like was hella fucking guilty about it told like everyone everything about it didn't try to deny it or any kind of thing like that they both stated that the reasoning was because they wanted to please slender man and that after they supposedly were supposed to kill Peyton that they were going to meet him at the mansion and that was like their ticket to prove like hey you're allowed to come and like live with with him so they just (laughs) decided they were going to walk up interstate 94 yeah (laughs) 200 miles to basically our backyard yeah and just be like he was slender man also where the fuck is this mansion because if it's a real place if it's somewhere where they're like hey this is slender man's mansion or did they just go like that's a good spot for it i want to know like there's got to be some kind of lore for it that would explain it but but also i didn't think that slender man was like I don't think Wisconsin that, based No, I don't stuff. think it was. I think they figured, hey, this is a big national forest. He's this is probably a big there. wooded area, yeah. Maybe they went on a field trip there at some point. I don't know. Um, I don't think they bus kids two hundred miles. The Monaco Zoo. Maybe. That was a facial expression. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just anyway, anyway. I tried to hold it together there. But so yeah, they wanted just to please Slenderman and all of this kind of shit. Um so back to Peyton. Peyton was in the hospital for only a week, which was kind of shocking because That's you, really she went through two for, major surgeries yeah. to repair her diaphragm and then the um stab wound to her heart. And then like this happened in May and she went back to school in September. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. So Morgan was charged with attempted first degree homicide and Anissa was charged with second degree attempted homicide just because of the fact. Basically, you're an accomplice. You didn't hold the knife, but you didn't stop it either. They did try them both as adults. Uh, I feel like that might be a little bit of a stretch. I think it was the premeditation that happened and then that's why they tried them both as adults. I feel like Anissa, because she... She could have easily thought, been charged as a juvenile, yeah. The, yeah, I, I think she should have been tried mm-hmm. as a juvenile. At the same time, it's hard to say because Anissa didn't seem to make any effort to... Stop, I- yeah. Yeah, she didn't stop her I from mean, doing it. She, she couldn't turn around I and mean, get to help. To be honest, with how Morgan acts and acted during that, I could see her being absolutely terrified that she would be next. It's hard to... They they had a whole trial on whether or not they would be tried as... Um, if she was that scared, why didn't she and, run away? Yeah. She backed off, and then she walked away with mm-hmm. Morgan. Right. They did have a, like a court and then they appearance both ended to up see if they would both be... Because uh, it was... I think they had their court cases at the same time, and then they were tried separately. Okay. So it, they were first joined and then they did it separately because they were trying to, they had There's them, two different levels of fault here. Yeah. So they at first they had that co- first court proceeding and it was like, okay, are they going to be tried as, uh, is this juvenile court or is this, you know, right, uh, adult court? And then they had enough evidence to show that like, you know, they had the premeditation and all that kind of stuff. So then they um, did the adult court. Okay. So both girls did end up taking a plea. They both were found uh, not guilty by a mental disease or defect. Hmm. Defect. They both went under heavy testing for mental conditions and everything yeah. like at this time. And it was at this point that Morgan was diagnosed with also having schizophrenia like her father. Early onset then. Because mm-hmm. that usually sets, Very early. That usually sets in at like 20s. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking maybe her hitting puberty might have done this. And it also kind of explains the whole obsession with, you know, Slenderman having those ideas like, oh, he's fucking after me. And then maybe it might explain the whole obsession with suicide. Is schizophrenia something that has a higher percentage of likelihood genetically? Like because her dad had it. it Yeah. So if they knew there was such an increased chance of her having it, why weren't there things put into place sooner? Probably because they didn't know if she had it because she wasn't showing symptoms until like weeks before this happened. And with kids, you're not really expecting it. That I schizophrenia feel, is really I feel like the few weeks beforehand should have been a huge warning sign, mm-hmm. especially to her family who knew what the warning signs were after right, going through but it with her dad. You never really hear kids like maybe when you're like 
16, 17, you really kind of get diagnosed because that's when you have more of. But with the genetic predisposition and mm-hmm. and the multiple, we you said it was like three weeks difference. So I believe so. Yeah. Look, multiple days of people seeing her like obsessing over this stuff and nobody right. and all of those people that saw that nobody said anything and if her family had caught on to it and been like something's going on mm-hmm. they would have at least had the right direction to look it could have right. been preventable i mean they might have not to damn morgan's family but i don't like, know if they had seen the stuff i just i don't know if they knew how to help her or it, it it's there's not a whole lot of information out there about about it and like what her I, I, there's no house life or any kind of thing like that other than they say that she had a normal childhood so I don't know if they like because she could have been a completely different person at school and at home <laughs> so it's I don't hard, I don't it's know hard it's hard to, to say, say but I mean it's speaking from firsthand experience I mean I'm not a mother but I am someone that has dealt with mental health mm-hmm. issues for a long time and I know what it felt like then to be so emotionally worked up be it angry or upset or anything mm-hmm. that like my ears would burn because I was just so amped up and not knowing what to do or how to do anything about it and mm-hmm. having gone through those experiences feeling like I was alone in that experience because I didn't want to burden anybody else with my problems. Right. I know ways to cope with that kind of thing. So I would like to think that in the future, if I if I see my child experiencing these things that plagued me so much. You'd be like, hey, I, I know, know how to deal with it. Exactly. And, yeah. I mean, she could have just barely been showing symptoms before this happened. Possible. That's the only way that I can kind of see that kind of thing but i feel like having like the hallucinations and like the paranoia of the fact that like the slender yeah. man character is going after her that really should have been the big that thing that should have that should have mm-hmm. been the okay we're we're calling for a cycle yeah like, right now so anissa was sentenced to 25 years to life and the sentence involved at least three years of locked in confinement so like actually prison time mm and then involuntary treatment in a state a state psychiatric institute followed by communal supervision supervision until she's 37 so basically they do 3 years in prison and then they are moved to a mental institution where they live in there and they are given treatment and once because they do have the ability to be released because technically Mm -hmm. they are not in prison at that point Mm -hmm. if they file for release which she did and she was uh this was granted three years ago so basically now she is gps monitored at all times she has mandatory treatment still and she will be supervised until she's 37 and um, that's for Anissa. That's not even for Morgan. That's for Anissa. Okay. Um, she's not allowed to have unmonitored internet access, and then she's not allowed to have any social media accounts. But she is able to use the internet. She just cannot have accounts. She can't connect with people on the internet. Basically, yeah. So she, and this is only until she's thirty-seven. So where where were they housed for their prison time? Like, would they be in an adult jail at? I think it was just them in like they, a con- I, say. I don't know if they actually were. I think they just w- ended up going straight to the mental institution and then they were just like kept separate for a few years. I okay. think that's what happened. But from the most part what I know and could find that they were mainly in that mental institution. Okay. Because I was going to say, where do you put a a 12-year-old in an adult prison? Yeah, I don't... (laughs) They can't go to Gen Pop. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think they did end up just kind of being in a secluded area of that mental institution. That's the only thing that I could see that would make sense, just because they are kids and you got to think of their safety, too. Right. So... Morgan was given the maximum sentence of 40 years to life. Indeterminate sentence involving at least three (laughs) years uh, of locked confinement and then involuntary treatment at a state psychiatric institute until the completion uh, slash uh, resolution of symptoms. So like she knows how to control her schizophrenia and you know. Right. Basically until she's well medicated like her father. Or she reaches the age of 53. It's whatever one comes first. Okay. Um. 
And then she would also be followed by con- uh, continued supervision, which is like, you know, she would have the GPS marker. And, She's like, basically someone... got an ankle bracelet, be it physical or... Mm-hmm whatever until she's 53 it's not no matter house, what she's going to be tracked it's not house arrest they're just gps tracked and then they would also she would also continue further treatment and like would also have the mandatory therapy and then as of january 2024 morgan petitioned the court for her release since anissa had been released three years prior and she has a hearing for that scheduled for april so this coming April. This coming April, yeah. So we'll probably touch bases back mm-hmm. on this then with that little update. It'll probably just be a snippet in an episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we do actually have our episodes on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. So that would likely end up being something that you'll find updated there more than you would if you're listening to the podcast on any major podcast mm-hmm. services like Spotify and what have you. Right. So, I mean, at this point, she has been in that psychiatric hospital for about 10 years now. Right. It'll, it'll, it'll be 10 years. Like, I would like I to think that she's June probably in and a she more had, stable... Right. And she has the highest access um, that you can have in that mental institution. So, she's able to come and go with supervision, obviously. Right. Um, she has free access throughout... She's doing really well, according to the doctors there. And I and hate is, to say it this way, but this is going to be one of those situations where it's you really, really hope that they're a better person now and don't want to I assume that something might be happening. But I do believe that them going to that mental institution was a very good plea deal that they got because way they were, better than just prison time. Right. Because they were. They are being like quite literally forced to get the help that they needed, and mm-hmm. I definitely think, like, especially with Morgan with the schizophrenia, because she probably had no idea what was going on, and I think she was just in this. I think what happened was you had two people that are living in delusions, mm-hmm. because I'm not entirely sure what kind of mental conditions that Anissa had. I couldn't but find Morgan it anywhere. But Morgan did have the schizophrenia. But she had the schizophrenia. And with schizophrenia, you were very easily paranoid. If you have the paranoid schizophrenia. Cause it's you the most have, common, I believe. Mm-hmm. But I know if you have the one... Because like, schizophrenia is not just one solid... <laughs> It's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. We're always, Do we need that on a fucking shirt? We need to put... It, uh, <laughs> yes. The Massacre but, Matinee, mm-hmm. It's a Spectrum t-shirts. So that'll be our first ever merch. <laughs> you heard it here first, yeah. folks. So I do think that she probably fell into this paranoia and mm. and was living in this delusion that hey I need to like do essentially a sacrifice then I can get Slenderman off my back and like I can just go live with him or something like that and then I right. think Anissa just had the right conditions herself to also believe into this delusion and i think they were just feeding off of each other's delusions okay and i do think that and this was on more of the lighter side of these like i do think that she had a little bit more of control over herself versus morgan did because she was able to be like okay like this was wrong and she had the empathy and everything like that and she was able to she, see the right well, from wrong i do but i don't i mean she backed off but she still didn't go for help so something was right still so not that's right. why right but i do think that she was more in touch with reality than morgan was yes and i think i do think that it's a little bit more fair that she did get that lighter sentence because of the fact that she i think the fact that she wasn't the one with the knife and wasn't the one doing the stabbing but still, she was there. Like, obviously, but, she's mean, there, not... There she's is still the question, guilty of it. There is the question that nobody can answer, and that would be, if she had the knife, would she have stabbed? We don't know. Right. And that's the real difference between whether or not mm-hmm. she had... I can't really say... Well, maybe maybe remorse is the right word. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, she definitely had remorse. Like, right away, she was just like, I really wish I didn't fucking do this. So, But she obviously didn't have too much regret because she didn't get help. So a lot kind of happened in the aftermath of the You've of got the two attack. separate devices worth of notes? Uh, well, I, this is what I didn't want to write down. Otherwise, I would have had, like, four more fucking pages. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I so think where's, it's just... where's this being referenced from? 
I'm not going to lie. This is from Wikipedia. Okay. This is just because of the fact that this isn't stuff that like, you know, this is the aftermath of the shit. It has nothing to do with like the actual crime itself. Right. So the school di- district actually banned the creepy pa- pasta uh, wiki from all of their websites and everything like that. So kids couldn't do that because of the stabbing. Understandably. I don't necessarily think that. And the creator Reddit. of Slenderman actually came out and had a statement about it. Oh. He said, I am deeply saddened by the tragedy in Wisconsin and my heart goes out to the families of those affected by this terrible act. So he, he was like, fuck. Like, <laughs> he, w- he was like, this was not my fault. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's like, like I'm so story. sorry that some story that I created like caused this. The, I'm pretty sure that this is a user name, but Slosh Train. The uh, administrator of the Creepypasta Wiki said that the stabbing was an isolated incident and that it did not accurately represent the Creepypasta community. He also stated that the Creepypasta Wiki Wiki was a literary literary website and that they did not condone murder or satanic rituals because a lot of people said that they were trying to do a satanic ritual. Yeah, Creepypastas are just fictional, scary stories. Members of the Creepypasta community held a 24-hour live stream on YouTube in June to raise money for Peyton for like medical bills and stuff like that like the june after the stabbing no yeah so it was that next month okay they said that the purpose of the live stream was to show uh, the members of the community that they cared for the victim and that they did not condone real world violence because they enjoyed fiction that contains violence on august 12th governor scott walker issued a proclamation during Declaring that Wednesday, August 13th, 2014 would be Purple Hearts Day for Healing. Purple Hearts for Healing Day. Sorry. (laughs) That encouraged the people of Wisconsin to wear purple hearts on that day to honor the victim of the stabbing. He also praised the strength and determination exhibited by Peyton during her recovery. The city of Madison held a one-day Bratwurst Festival in her honor. That's a very (laughs) Wisconsin thing. I don't know why you're giggling. That's that's as Wisconsin as you can get. Um, Several days before the victim returned to school, hot dogs and bratwurst were sold to raise money towards the victim's medical costs. They're just missing the cheese curd. <laughs> the event was run over, run by over 250 volunteers and raised over uh, $70,000 for her. Very cool. I wish I knew how much the live stream ended up getting for her, but I couldn't find that information. See, I was not actually... This is the one time that a case happened in recent years in Wisconsin that I wasn't like in the area. Yeah. I was down in Florida. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading about it, though. When Peyton turned 17, she uh, spoke to ABC's uh, 2020 about her experience for the first time. It was like the first time that she actually like, so, like, went five, into public. Five years later, she yeah, did a she was like, okay, I'm gonna, about it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I understand that. I I don't think that she should have been forced to talk about it until she was ready. I, this is mm-hmm. a traumatic event. Uh, she was asked to speak on like what she thinks of her scars, and she goes, well, I don't really think about them much. They will probably just go away and fade away eventually. She told the interviewers that she met her attackers in fourth grade, and when asked if, when asked what she would say if she ever saw Morgan again, Lautner added that she would probably thank her because the attack inspired her to pursue a career in medicine. Okay, respect. And then in September 2021, when... Anissa was released. It was revealed that Peyton had moved out of the county and was attending a college as a sophomore student, pursuing her medical degree. And she's doing really well. So she's just being a total badass. Yeah. She was like, you know what? Shit, as young as she was, Mm -hmm. being able to drag herself up to a major road and get help. I definitely believe that when she got older, she understood that understood that they were like really mentally ill at the time and i don't know if she really obviously she probably holds but I mean, a little bit fact, against the them but i don't she, think she like i mean you said she went home after seven days so she was only in the hospital for a week mm-hmm. and those people in that hospital clearly had an impact on her for yeah. her to turn around and be like i'm gonna save lives All right this case sparked a lot of fucking debate on the internet yeah of- the effect of the internet on children and like this is a big thing that i didn't really want to get like hugely into but basically it was just like it started like a whole bunch of research being done about like the effects of it and there was like people from the fbi like retired agents from the fbi saying that the internet became a black hole with the ability to expose children to a more sinister world i'm sorry people do that by themselves without the internet the fact of the matter is is um people the, the children would not okay 
as a child, I grew up with internet, but without social media. <laughs> the thing that tainted the internet is the social media. Yeah, I mean, I had that weird transitional, like, I had the internet, but then it transitioned into the social social media, so it was weird. When, when I was a kid, if you went on the internet and you searched up math games, you would find math games. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't search it on the internet, it wouldn't show up on whatever website you were looking at. Mm-hmm. So... I could go and play math games, and if somebody else wanted to go and look up some really gory, nasty stuff, they could go and look up some really gory, nasty stuff. But if you didn't have the forethought to look for those things, Mm -hmm. they wouldn't show up. Right. It just kind of also became a thing where it's like, hey, parents, like you need to really check in on what your kids are doing and monitor it. And then it's kind of became like the, hey, parent. It's not the internet's fault. It's overbearing, though. It's the parents needing to kind of keep in check. What the kids are looking at. Like, the, honestly, the perfect thing about this is, like, my niece, she really fucking loves horror f- stuff. And she was looking up a whole bunch of horror stuff. And, like, my sister was like, you're having fucking nightmares. You need to stop this. And she yeah. would be like, hey, you're like, you know what? If I see this, like, you're not going to be able to watch it. And she was like, okay. And it's gotten to the point where they have to have a heavily monitored um youtube's kids version mm-hmm. on the phone so she can't look up this stuff so i think it's that instance of like hey if you're noticing something is causing your kid to have Nightmares. this reaction and yeah. like all that kind of stuff then you need to limit point, their access it is okay to... to be overbearing about yes. it so then they aren't harmed the problem the problem is not the internet it, it is the expansive access to the internet mm-hmm. If it's like a 14 year old, then okay, you need, you don't need to be heavily on their ass about it. But with, if it's like an eight year reason. old, yeah, within reason, within obviously. Reason. I mean, it, going back to your niece as the example, mm-hmm. like there's physical reaction mm-hmm. to something that she's experiencing. She was having nightmares. Right. There was something noticeably different. And with that limited access, it's mm-hmm. not a problem anymore. But like at the same time, like let's say you have like a 14 year old boy. Obviously, they're going to be looking at some stuff, you know. <laughs> so it's that instance where it's kind of like, a, it's a weird fine line of letting a, chil- like letting a c- child find themselves and explore certain aspects. <laughs> We're not going to have the sex talk on the no. podcast. I'm That's sorry. why I'm saying certain aspects, but then that, also the making sure that they're not this is kind looking, of being edited out. <laughs> that they're not looking at, you know, like how to build bombs you know like so there's as they get older obviously you need to adjust your stuff i guess that's what i'm saying like keep in mind your your kid's age and like know when to put more barriers in place versus to kind of like lean back a little bit and kind of let your kid be a kid right so it's a fine line but this case definitely sparked that debate and sparked a whole bunch of research and everything like that but the internet's here. It's here to stay. You just kind of have to adapt. Like, you can't yes. have the same parenting techniques as you did back in, like, the 80s. <laughs> so, it's like... I'm not that old. No, I'm not saying <laughs> you <what? laughs> I'm just saying, like, you can't just tell your kid, hey, go play outside until the street lights come on. Because now it's hey. a really weird thing. They might not fucking come back. So... <laughs> that's how I grew hey, up, I was though. a street and that's- lamp kid. That's honestly, that's what scares me about the future is that's mm-hmm. how I grew up and you can't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there were a lot of serial killers you back know, in like the well, 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, dude, it's almost like impossible for a fucking serial. You're seeing a lot more mass murders because it's almost impossible for a serial killer to get away with stuff with how much forensics have. Um, Are you telling me that the only reason serial killers don't exist anymore is because they get caught too fast? Yeah. <laughs> and that means good good but like you don't see it because if i can't kill them one at a time i'll just do it all at once it's literally how it is like you're seeing killing sprees versus like serial like genuine serial killers like we couldn't have a fucking zodiac killer in this day and age with the ciphers and shit even though it took mm. 50 years for one of the ciphers to to get um cracked cracked and everything like that and it was like such a disappointing fucking cipher <laughs> they think it's because the dude made a whole bunch of fucking spelling mistakes in his own stuff and that's what made the ciphers really hard because he was kind of you think maybe he did it on purpose oh i think a little bit dude we gotta do the fucking zodiac killer coming up we will anyway so I... that was the slender man <laughs> stabbing <laughs> i do wish 
everyone kind of well in this. No one really won in this case. And everyone kind of lost. Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like even though she was the one that got stabbed, Peyton kind of won. Oh, well, yeah. She's doing really well. But I do hope you go, that girl, they... You go, woman. I do hope that the other two girls continue to get the help that they need. And I hope that they are able to learn from what they did and understand and take the responsibility that that was something that they did. And I hope they can choose to be better. It's, it's a really low bar that they have to be better. They just don't need to go stabbing someone. But I, I like I do. It's not that hard of a motto to live by. Just no. wake up in the morning and <sighs> I'm, I'm not, not going to kill spill. anyone today. <laughs> like, like, how hard I, is it? I do hope that they are able to. Because they were just kids. I'm hoping that they do get. Everyone gets some sense of a little bit of normacy, normalcy. I know that they won't really because they're going to constantly have someone. I really feel like. Them. <sighs> Me personally, I would just have like heightened anxiety being anywhere near either of them. Oh, yeah. Especially Morgan, because it's <laughs> the thing about some of these mental illnesses. I don't oh, know. She I don't know a whole snap. lot about uh, schizophrenia or paranoid schizophrenia mm-hmm. or anything like that. But one of my biggest fears in situations like this is the possibilities of, like you said, they just snap mm-hmm. or they get out and it was all an act. And like you said, yeah. the, it's it's a not a house arrest situation when they get out. It's just a GPS track. So an incident could happen and all that GPS right. track is going to do is say, hey, they were there when mm-hmm. the murder happened. I don't know if they're able to like go live by themselves. I like that's what my thought is. is I don't is think they're some able kind to. They like have to have some housing like, situation. I think so I think it's them having to be in a um like a a group home type mm-hmm. thing. Which you know what, they could have gotten a lot worse. They could be behind bars, in a not so great place. And I do not think that they would turn out to be good people. But um, I do. I am glad that Wisconsin of all fucking places had that forethought of like these girls need some serious help right and that they what do you mean of all places due to the midwest (laughs) let's be honest the midwest isn't the fucking best for like mental health care but i'm just glad that they did kind of do the whole which also kind of kind of surprised that they got the bleed of insanity just because of the fact that um there Mm. was premeditation there (laughs) But I think it was because well, of the fact there, they were there 12. was the premeditation there, but they also did the psyche valve stuff before they even yeah. got sentenced. So they had the proof. Hey, this one's definitely I don't even fucking think that nuts. They technically like, went. They I don't think they even went to trial. I think it was just them like going, and then they were like, "Hey, like, it was probably just hearings." Mm-hmm. Because at that at that point, they they definitely knew something was up, but. The trial was probably a formality just to be able Mm -hmm. to shuffle them straight into the psychiatric system. Because realistically, like I said earlier, where would you put a 12-year-old in a prison? At least in psychiatric centers, they've got different Mm -hmm. age groups. Yeah. And in those situations, they would be able to learn the social skills and things. And I mean, yeah, everybody that you meet there is a little bit more awkward than most Mm -hmm. But you've still got the social interactions and learn. you can learn how to fucking treat people because some people need that extra push. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking like pat on the butt. <laughs> but yes, push. <laughs> yeah, fucking and goo goo. Get your ass in gear. But yeah, so. This one was a bit of a stretch. I'm sorry that we kept you guys here so long. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that we'd hit an hour. Wow. Oh, I'm so proud of us. It's been, it's been a while since we've done a long episode. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try for like the second time now to wrap up this yeah. episode. <laughs> so yeah, that was the Slenderman <coughs> case. Um, I guess kind of, I don't really know. There's not really much to let, let us know on this one. It's just one of those ones where no one wins. No one loses. Everyone loses. But I guess we will see you in the next episode. Yeah, I think the next one is... um, Hang on, let me pull up our... (laughs) Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. (laughs) so fancy. I put the check marks on already. Oh, shit. We're so professional. I know. I'm so proud. So much pressure. 
Uh, the next one's going to be a regular episode. So we're going to have two regular episodes. Mm. No. Uh, one regular episode. And then we will have our Leap Day episode. Do you know what we're doing for Leap Day? I do not tell us what we're doing for a Leap Day. Well, you see, the thing is, is it's really hard to... That little bounce. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, once we get fucking video, they're going to see how bad we are. <laughs> <coughs> this is going to be terrible. So... Uh, for leap day, it's really hard to find like a true crime or a murder or anything that actually mm-hmm. happens on February 29th. So the closest thing that I could find was that it is Richard Ramirez's birthday. Mm. So we're going to do the Richard Ramirez thing. Woo. They only have a real birthday every four years. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be unique anyway. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>